I'm Sarah. You can call me Pixie. Today I am doing the mid-year freakout tag because I am freaking out a bit. I've finished 12 books towards my goal of 65, which is only 18% of my goal complete and we are already halfway through the year. So I am very far from the goal. Uh, I'm pondering bringing the goal down a bit still undecided. We'll see how July goes and then maybe we'll go from there. I'm tr I've been trying to focus on the books that I own but I don't own a lot of audiobooks and don't really have a whole lot of time to just sit and read the e-books and physical books that I do have so that is where the uh, problem has been coming so either I need to give up on trying to read most of the books that I own and just start downloading audiobooks from Scribd and the Libby app or something and um, whatever I read, I read. <laughs> Anyways, we are here for the mid-year freakout tag and the first question is, what is the best book you've read so far? I'm going to split this between nonfiction and fiction, starting with the nonfiction. The best nonfiction book I read so far is Shut Up and Write the Book by Jenna Moresi. I know I'm saying the last name wrong, I cannot get my mouth to form it exactly. Anyways, Jenna has a YouTube channel, I will leave it linked in the description down below so you can check out her channel and get tons of writing advice if you don't want to get the book. Um, you can find her unique uh, way of giving advice on her YouTube channel. I've loved her no-nonsense, uh, straight-to-the-point, no-fluff way of saying things and explaining how things should work, do work, and her opinions on the publishing process. In Shut Up and Write the Book, she takes us through her process step by step and includes mentions of some of the programs and uh, tips that she uses to accomplish her writing process. And she's published three, nope, four books now, I think. Three of them are currently available. She unlisted um, her first book off of Amazon due to reasons watch her videos, she explains it. Um, but so yeah, she is a accomplished self-published author, so check out her channel. For fiction, I'm going with Furies of Calderon by Jim Butcher. Not gonna lie, I was a little hesitant about this book. I've tried the audiobooks for his Dresden series and didn't get very far before deciding to put the series down because I just wasn't enjoying it enough to continue. There were other books and other series that I wanted to try more than continuing on the, with the Dresden series. Furies of Calderon I found to be 50 times better. Uh, I didn't want to stop and when I did stop I couldn't wait to pick it up again. I tried it because of the story behind how the series got started. Apparently uh, Jim was speaking at some event and was posed a question something along the lines of is it the author that makes the story or the story that makes the story? He said it was the author because an author can make the bad idea good. And he was then given two things that do not go together and uh, said he would put those together in a good book. The two things he was given was Roman Legion and Pokemon. Now I fell in love with a gamer and he has gotten me to play Pokemon so I was kind of interested in how these two things were going to go together and I was not disappointed. <laughs> So uh, apparently they can mix quite well uh, uh, with uh, Jim behind uh, in the driver's seat, we'll say, I guess. The next question is, what is the best sequel you've read so far? I feel a little attacked with this question. <laughs> uh, in looking through the 12 books 
I've managed to finish so far this year, only two of them were sequels. And I'm still working on um, another sequel, so I could have had three if I managed to finish it. It was on my June TBR, didn't manage to finish it, so I've only finished two. Of the two I finished, one has me thinking it's time to stop reading the series, which we'll talk about later with one of the later questions, which kind of leaves us with the second one. So somewhat by default, um, we have The Gesture by Michael J. Sullivan. This is a short story that became part of the Riera Chronicles, and if I remember the intro to the book, I think um, Michael Sullivan may have written it to be put in some anthology of short stories to be sold for charity. I don't remember what the charity was. I have a vague memory of the, like him introducing the book or something though. Uh, my only complaint is is in how short it was. The audio is less than an hour, but it is so jam-packed uh, that you still feel satisfied at the end. So except for the time on the actual clock, uh, you don't necessarily have any idea of how short it is. It's just suddenly over and you're like, was that like, what, what just, yeah, that, that was a story, but it's like, I still wanted more. The Rearia Chronicles are like these long bindings of like two stories in one book, so you like are essentially binging two stories in one and you get a lot out of them, and then you have this like little micro story in comparison. <laughs> and so I, I just wish it was a little longer. The third question, what is a new release you want to get to but haven't gotten to yet? I've actually been trying to not pay attention to books coming out since I ha have so many already on my TBR and others that I don't own but want to read. Um, but I, I have purchased um, one or two new books. Uh, the, the one that uh, I've purchased that is a new release this year is Witch King by Martha Wells. I feel like everyone has raved over the Murderbot series that she wrote, and this is a new fantasy by her. Murderbot series was science fiction, this is fantasy. This is a little more up my alley, so I don't know, maybe if I like this I'll try the Murderbot series. They're like microscopic um, books as well, they're not that long, uh, should be quick to get through. I just, I haven't really been vibing with sci-fi lately, so... I kind of stayed away from the Murderbot series. And uh, I'm a little confused but intrigued by reading the synopsis. Uh, it almost sounds like we're gonna have a murdered king coming back to life or going around as a ghost or something. So it sounds kind of interesting. The fourth question, what is your most anticipated release for the second half? of the year. Uh, again, I haven't really been paying attention to new books coming out, but I was watching somebody else do the, the mid-year uh, freak out tag and they mentioned, they mentioned, <laughs> they mentioned a book and I actually just finished uh, the first book of the series. Um, I listened to it from Scribd. Uh, there's a new book, Bookshops and Bone Dust, uh, that will be coming out on November 7th, and it is kind of like a prequel to Legends and Lattes. So I'm very intrigued, and if this Bookshops and Bone Dust is anything like Legends and Lattes, Travis Baltry may likely become a favorite author, and this will be a favorite series as well. Question five. What was your biggest disappointment in the first half of the year? My biggest disappointment, I'm going to have to say, was Encore in Death by J.D. Robb. I've been a fan of the series for so long now and listened to the books over and over again. 
I'm sure I must have listened to at least two or three of the books like 50 times alone <laughs> for each. Channeling Lieutenant Eve Dallas has helped me with some of my anxiety and I guess I've kind of worn the series out and learned the characters, including the side characters, a bit too well. I accurately predicted the reappearance of one of these side characters that was in one of the previous books for maybe five minutes? Maybe. Uh, so I, uh, I was able to predict a lot of the stuff that was happening in the book and I just, it has me thinking that it might be time to put the series to bed. Um, it is a, like a 56 book series plus a number of short stories and I have read them all multiple times except for this last one, <laughs> except for book 56. I listened to it once and I think that was it. So I'm I'm not sure that so unfortunately Encore in Death by JD Robb was my my biggest disappointment so far. And now flipping things over, question six. What was your biggest surprise so far? I guess I would have to say Red Rising was my biggest surprise, and it was a surprise not in a good way. I did mention I haven't been vibing with sci-fi, and this one, while it is sci-fi, it's not a strong sci-fi. It's just kind of a, a space setting uh, where we're essentially battling things out on Mars and some other planets. Um, I I still, I thought I would love it and uh, it, it, was, it was just straight kind of middle of the road for me. It was right around a three star average. Um, I enjoyed it, uh, but I didn't like, I wasn't excited to get back to it when I, when I stopped reading it. I, it was very easy for me to do other things and forget to pick up the audiobook altogether. Like I would go on walks and I'd be like halfway down the block and realize that, oh, I don't even have earbuds or anything with me. I'm, I guess I'm not listening to the audiobook. Oh well, and uh, off we went. <laughs> or I'd even still be in the driveway, but it's like, eh, it's not worth it. And off we went. So, uh, unfortunately, Red Rising was my biggest surprise. And it just, it, it just didn't vibe with me. Question seven. Who is your new favorite author you discovered this year? For this, I'm going to go with Travis Baltry, who wrote Re Legends and Lattes. I can speak, really. Uh, I already kind of talked about me recently finishing Legends and Lattes and loving it. So... I'm not going to repeat myself, we'll just move right along here to question number eight. Your newest fictional crush. Honestly, I hate this question. I don't really crush on book characters. I have characters I admire, but I don't really crush on characters anymore. Um, but so if I'm picking like a, a new character I admire, I would have to say Viv from Legends and Lattes. She picks up and leaves her life of killing and questing and opens a coffee shop. And she opens this coffee shop in an area where nobody knows what coffee is. And she can't even really explain to them what coffee is and to convince them that they should try the drink. So I admire her for taking a large risk and uh, you could kind of argue she makes a 180 in her career choice. Question nine, who is your newest favorite character? Please see the previous question. <laughs> Perhaps I should have waited to explain uh, the admiration and I should have just skipped on over to this question because uh, I, I would say Viv is is my favorite character newest favorite character anyways um, yeah I don't really have anything to add question 10 
a book that made you cry. I'm gonna go with Dragons and Demons by Cal Cade. I can't really say why because this is book number five I believe in the series. Yes, five because I'm just a prequel. So it's actually like book six of like books involved in the series but there's kind of like a spin-off prequel thing. Suddenly I'm blanking uh, and when I say it's book five it doesn't sound right but I'm pretty sure it's book five of uh, the King's Dark Tidings series so I can't really say a whole lot uh, without spoilers. Um, and, and, and I didn't quite cry but I did have to walk away in shock uh, because of what happened to one of the characters and I had to put the, the book down uh, and go recollect myself before I could come back and finish it. Question 11. A book that made you happy. The closest I can come to this is A River of Royal Blood by Amanda Joy. I recall a few times in like the beginning of the book where our main character Eva sneaks out and enjoys a few nights on the town where she's just dancing and forgetting the whole princess uh, needing to battle and kill the, the other sister thing. <laughs> um, but I, I really felt the moment and uh, I did dance for like 15 years and so I, I really loved those scenes. They, they made me happy. Question 12 I think. I'm not sure I'm holding my fingers up right. It's one or the other. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Question 12. What is the most beautiful book you purchased this year? I've only purchased two books so far this year. Uh, so I'm gonna have to kind of go back to a book I used for a previous question and say Witch King by Martha Wells is the most beautiful book I purchased this year. The other book was a nonfiction book and it has a very minimalistic cover. Nothing really exciting going on. So yeah, I'm, I'm going with Witch King by Martha Wells. And the last question, question 13, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Kind of along the lines of like everybody, oh so many. <laughs> but some ones that I would really trying to finish this year or would love to say catch up on. Um, I do own all of the books in the Furic Saga by A.E. Rain. I know I've mentioned this series a couple of times. Um, the books are really kind of long and so it's taking me a while to get through them but uh, I think I'm on book three and there are six books in the series. Um, some others that I would like to read are the Fruits Basket manga. I have up through book nine um, so if I can catch up with the ones that I own at least uh, that would be nice. I know there's I don't know how many. I've never actually looked and found the end of the series, so I don't know how many more there are to go. There's there's a bunch though. Uh, so yes, I would like to uh, catch up with and um, maybe continue in uh, getting the the rest of the series. So those are some books I'd like to finish before the end of the year and what I thought of uh, some of the books I've read so far. How is your reading going this year and do you have a favorite book so far? Let me know in the comments and I will see you again soon. TTFN!